Thank you, Michael. Good morning and uh, welcome everyone. If you came today because your OOS said that Jeannie was the lay leader today, I hope you're not disappointed. <laughs> I will do my best in place of Jeannie. As always, we begin our service with the acknowledgement of territory and we'll start with Shannon. Good morning, everybody. Here in Canmore, I am privileged to live, work, worship, and play on the traditional lands of the Iyarhe Nakota nations, Bears Paw, Chiniki, and Wesley. They are signatories along with other nations in southern Alberta to Treaty 7. I'd also like to acknowledge the stewardship of the land of uh, Métis Nation, Region 3. <laughs> Friends, we are all treaty people. Here in Markham, we walk and worship on the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. These are the lands of the Williams Treaty. Acknowledgement and understanding of our collective past is but a small first step in reconciliation. Welcome to this place, this safe place. It is a place to be who you are. As an old 70s song says, free to be you and me. And if you're not sure who you are or what you believe yet, that's okay too. You are welcome in this place and we are glad that you are here. Thank you, Michelle, for yet another creative a meaningful welcome and friends those of you at home if you wish to join me in lighting a candle uh, while Michelle lights the Christ candle in um, the sanctuary we are reminded at the very start of a service that it is around Christ's presence that we worship and have our being every day of our lives but we light a candle in worship to remind ourselves. <clears throat> Our announcements this morning. Uh, it looks like the weather is going to hold off, so there will be refreshments today for the first time in a long time. Outside the doors here, we look forward to having you all join us for that. Those of you who remember back in the old days when we were all here, during the summer we used to shout out our favorite hymns and Michael would play. That's not as easy when we've got some on Zoom and some in the church. So what we're going to ask you to do is email to the church, your th we're getting feedback guys, three favorite hymns and uh, We'll do our best to play at least one of them over the summer. You got a notice in the bulletin that on June 18th, not only do we have our wonderful festival out front and our lawn will be home to the kids zone, but as a bonus, Reverend Shannon and members of the tradition, a transition team are going to be outside the sanctuary between two and four o'clock that day. I would like to remind you, however, that there's no way to drive to the church during the festival. Your best bet is to park over across uh, at the community center and walk. You can't get a car onto the main street on Saturday, June 18th. Shannon? I'd just like to add uh, to Michelle's note about the um the requesting of hymns for those of you on Zoom, you can print them right into the into the chat, uh, your top three, and um, uh, or you can email them or or call Nayla. That's just fine. And you you get to do this twice, so you can actually choose your top six. Okay, little secret. We're doing it next week too. Friends, the transition team has come to a place where we have discerned that it is time to begin the search process once again. 
I invite you to take a close look and prayerfully consider the announcement in the bulletin. We are asking the congregation to provide names for the, um, the joint transition team uh, the, the, and council to, uh, we have two more places on the search committee that need to be filled and we would like you to participate in letting us know who you think has the gifts and whom you would like um, representing you. And I also want to just highlight that Camp Big Canoe, the, um, the donation list is in the bulletin and uh, you can drop off donations up until next week. Next week is the, uh, the last Sunday for the donations. There are a lot of announcements and they are all worthy of highlighting. Um, so I please ask you to take them all very seriously and, and uh, note them and engage in the life of this very active congregation. Friends, here on Zoom and in the sanctuary, we do gather around the light of Christ and we pass the peace of Christ in a safe way. I invite those of you in the sanctuary to give a wave and namaste. And those of us on, um, on Zoom, we can scroll through our, uh, our tiles to see who is here today. Peace of Christ be with you all, friends. At the moment, we have 33 sign-ins on Zoom. Michelle and I are going to read a, a call to worship responsibly. Creating God, God beyond gender. Who makes no mistakes, who surprises us always who molded the first person, both male and female, who molded the first non-gendered human, who lo loves all creation. Help us love the diversity of your creation. Help us accept all varieties of gender in ourselves and in others. Help us celebrate those who are different from us. That we may learn to love each other as you love us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, both human and divine. May it be so. Friends, today is Trinity Sunday. I, have, I, don't, wear, I don't wear jewelry very much, but I have pulled out my little Trinity uh, uh, pendant from Iona. And I'm wearing a, a stole that was gifted to me by my congregation, St. Andrew's United Church in, Cal in uh, Calgary low those many years ago in 2005 and you can see it has a symbol of the trinity on the yeah. um on the stole and we do have more trinity symbols here so happy trinity sunday friends and we're going to sing a good old song this was a hymn that i entered um church with for all of my growing up years to the first verse of holy 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 also celebrating the trinity Let's sing with Michael and Jeannie.
great hymn. How often do you get to say, which word and art? The phrase. I'm not a clue what it means, but it sounds great. Friends, we are uh, in a very busy month. Um, this is Pride Month, all month long. And this is also Indigenous History Month. And um, so we have a lot to incorporate into our time of worship. Today we are focusing not only on the Trinity, but we are kind of lifting up um, gender diversity and sexual orientation diversity today. I invite you to join with me in a prayer of confession. Let us pray. Creating God, God of mercy, as we have acknowledged the diversity in this amazing world created in atoms and molecules, but with an underlying spirit of mystery, we must also admit that at times we have forgotten the wonders of that diversity. We have longed for things to be familiar and as they have always been. We know that the great religious traditions have caused harm in past and continue to cause harm and pain to those who express their being in ways different than the majority. We know too that we individually, both intentionally and unintentionally, have rejected and shunned those who are not like us. For this we are truly sorry and ask your patience as we learn and strive for ways to be more inclusive and celebrate all in this wonderful world. In a moment of silence, we bring before you our personal prayers of confession. Friends, hear words of assurance. Christ who gathers us invites us to follow the ways of love and justice. May our hearts be open to Christ's leading in our worship and our living this day and always. We're moving into a hymn that is not found in our hymnary. And this is a request that has come from Colette Kearns. This is a favorite hymn of her family. It is, it is well with my soul. When I took a look um, at the background of this hymn, it, it has a really interesting backstory. The uh, hymn was written by Horatio Gates Spafford, who was not uh, a minister or a musician, but he was an elder in a Presbyterian church in New York City. And he wrote it following the tragic death of his four daughters. His wife survived, um, but the, his four daughters died along with 222 other people when their steamship was struck mid-Atlantic as the, the family, the mother and daughters, were heading to, um, to Europe. So his wife survived the tragic accident. And when he traveled by steamship across the ocean and he came close to the place where the accident happened, um, he, of course, was uh, de devastated and in prayer. And the inspiration for this hymn came to him. And so consider this, that out of deep tragedy came these words of deep, deep faith. Friends, let us sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of It Is Well With My Soul.
times when we were having conversations um, about the uh, book of Revelation, I mentioned that a full 20% of the hymns in More Voices are uh, referring to the book of Revelation. Well, this isn't in the, in, uh, the More Voices, but there you go. The, our first two hymns referenced Revelation today. <laughs> We're going to hear words from Holy Scripture. And uh, Kathy Brewer is our reader today. And why are we hearing from Proverbs on Trinity Sunday? Well, we are hearing from Proverbs because um, Lady Wisdom, who is uh, a character in Proverbs in different places, <laughs> in the Christian tradition became associated both with Christ and with the Holy Spirit. And so she is seen as a, a precursor to the Trinity. Kathy. At the entrance of the portal, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. Wisdom's part in creation. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earthen fields or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighted in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Kathy. Friends, I invite you to pray with me. <clears throat> Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The United Church of Canada Statement of Faith came out in 2006. It's called The Song of Faith. And it begins this way. God is holy mystery, beyond complete knowledge, above perfect description, yet in love, the one eternal God seeks relationship. So God creates the universe and with it the possibility of being and relating. God tends the universe, mending the broken and reconciling the estranged. God enlivens the universe guiding all things toward harmony with their source. Grateful for God's loving action, we cannot keep from singing. With the church through the ages, we speak of God as one and triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We also speak of God as creator, redeemer, sustainer, God, Christ, and spirit, mother, friend, and comforter, source of life, living word and bond of love and in other ways that speak faithfully of the one on whom our hearts rely the fully shared life at the heart of the universe we witness to holy mystery that is holy love so that is the first section of um the song of faith and 
Christianity has always struggled to fit our experience of that holy mystery into these tiny, limited boxes called words. Now, last week, Reverend Tim unpacked the story of, of Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit and how that event reversed the story of the Tower of Babel, where God scattered the humans and created different languages to keep them from misusing their power. The Pentecost event and the gift of the Holy Spirit gave believers the ability to speak in many languages, so all present to that event at Pentecost could know and understand the good news of Jesus Christ. The Song of Faith in the United Church of Canada is a lovely, lovely poetic expression of what we hold most precious as a denomination. I, I love it dearly. <laughs> oh, and our denomination just turned 97 years old yesterday, on Friday. So we're coming up very soon to our 100th anniversary. Sorry about my aside. So the Song of Faith is written in such a way that it expects to change and adapt over time. And it is 16 years since it was accepted as our statement of faith. And I, I do love it dearly, but the priorities of our current church are not reflected as they might be otherwise. If we were to incorporate, say, our new expression of our core purpose to, that we are called to embody, that of deep spirituality, bold discipleship, daring justice. Our denomination's commitment to becoming an anti-racist church would probably be expressed a bit more clearly as well, along with our desire to live into right relations with our Indigenous siblings across Canada. And our desire to embrace sexual diversity might be expressed a, a bit stronger as so many more churches, both large and small, are becoming, have become and are becoming affirming communities of faith, along with camps and regions and other communities of faith. Um, 16 years ago, we might have had a Pride Sunday in church, but now we, we also recognize in the United Church of Canada Pride Month in June. We now embrace Indigenous History Month through June. We've looked to Black History Month as well as Asian History Month to open ourselves to stories that broaden us, that deepen us. All of these efforts are related. They're not just singular events because we are all related. Because God is all about relationships. I've come to understand the Trinity as energy and relationship more than noun. In Western Christianity, we kind of got hung up on the idea of God in three persons, which is stated twice at the end of verses in, um, in Holy, Holy, Holy. But these persons, the, the actual original word, is not talking about separate people or separate beings. They are different states of being, like the example of water. Water is two hydrogen atoms and attached, bonded with, with an oxygen atom. And water is water, whether it is a solid, a vapor, or a liquid. God is God. God is dynamic and is in a dynamic relationship with God's three states of being. Now, for me, my three that I prefer to, to talk about is, is creator, Christ, and spirit. Kenosis is a Greek word. And kenosis talks about that dynamic relationship. And what it means is self-emptying. And the three states of being in the Trinity empty themselves into one another. God the Creator emptied God's self into Christ in the Incarnation. The, the Creator became the created in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' life and his teaching and healing, Jesus emptied himself into the world, into creation, into the new community of followers around him. And in particular, Christ emptied himself in his death on the cross. And that death 
unlocked the way to life and led to the creation of an entirely new life-giving community. Those communities of the way of Jesus were filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit from that Pentecost event. And those communities emptied themselves also into creation and praising God. They were radically inclusive and did not follow the social norms and rules of the day. Slaves were, were uh, treated equally. Women were treated equally. And that threatened the status quo and the powers of the political and religious leaders. Those same gifts of radical inclusion that were Jesus' gift to the community, that actually led to Jesus' humiliating death on the cross. But that crack open death, that death on the cross, ended death, so to speak. Death could not hold all that, that life and that love. And the community of life became self-perpetuating because they were incarnating that self-emptying of the Trinity. So God empties God's self into Christ, the incarnation of God in human form. Christ in human form empties Christ's self into humanity and all of creation. And Christ empties Christ's self into the spirit of life. The Holy Spirit empties spirit's self into creator and creation. This divine self-emptying, this kenosis, creates energy and light for all of creation. So the Trinity is more like a dance. The dance is called perichoresis, and it is a dance of release and letting go. The Trinity is a dance of three states of being, three states of energy, and this makes the Trinity way more of a verb than a noun. And in different parts of scripture, we see how the Trinity is not bound by time and space. This dynamic dance is constantly creating all of creation in the divine present. In our reading today, divine wisdom from the Hebrew book of Proverbs became associated with both Christ and the Holy Spirit of the Trinity, sings of her being the creator's first act of creation and dancing with the creator through the creation of the world. At the end, she sings, I was beside him like a master worker. I was, his, I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. Now, do you remember Sidney Carter's Lord of the Dance? This is reflected, um, reflecting the Trinity as dance as well. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Love calls us to enter into the dance and practice letting go. And in letting go, we grow as communities, as individuals. We empty ourselves in order to join the dance. And this creates the space in our being and in our community to be filled with the dance and to enter the universal dance that is love. We can see that the ever-changing priorities of the United Church of Canada are not just moral stances. Becoming an anti-racist church is about letting go of all that has contributed to the diminishment and suffering of our siblings of color. Becoming an anti-racist church is about joining the dance of self-emptying and releasing in order to create something completely new as we heal and cast off the sin of racism, we heal ourselves and we heal relationships. Becoming an affirming community is also about casting off all that has made us too small. Learning to become, become that safe place that Michelle calls us to in her welcoming statement today, 
will change us. We will change in big and small ways the more our queer neighbors feel safe enough to feel embraced by, for all they are authentically. And our whole community will change in that relationship. And a quick side, I do know that some of you who are a part of the Connect group are beginning to study this book, which had a really significant impact on me, Queer Virtue, by uh, Reverend Elizabeth Edmond. And th the amazing thing about this book is how she talks about the incredible gifts. We will be changed for the better the more we can embrace queer culture in our churches. And I will ask you to indulge me as I share with you a part of my personal story. As a mom of a transgender, non-binary, amazing human being, I'm so deeply grateful for the opportunity to join the dance of letting go in order for the new creation to be born nearly three decades after my child Dean's first birth. I had to let go of the boxes and the words and the identifiers and the name that this child's father and I gave them. I won't lie and say that it was easy, but it was so much easier to let go of all those boxes and words and identifiers as we saw the transformation and joy that came home to stay with our beloved adult child, Dean, as they courageously took their transition journey towards their authentic male expression of who they really are in the world. My trans son had been living so small in ways that I had no idea of in order to fit into a gender idea and identity that was not home for them. The gift of transition is nothing short of miraculous. This experience of letting go to witness transformation is an amazing gift. It's really hard work too. Of course, I wish this gift on all families with children who struggle with a gender identity that does not fit. And I wish this gift on all faith communities to learn how to walk with and celebrate and be broken open as a community and changed as more trans and queer and LGBTQ2SIA plus beloved children and, uh, of God find life and love in faith communities like this one. Friends, we are always and forever in so many ways called to step into the dance of the Trinity, the dance of creation, the dance of new life. And so I leave this question with you. How is St. Andrew's United Church being invited in new ways to join the dance? I like to dance. I hope you do too. Amen. We're going to call on Gwyneth Mast, who is uh, who has uh, an oral update from the transition team for us. So a minute for intentional interim ministry. Good morning. The transition team is looking forward and can I add with excitement, to Reverend Shannon coming this week. She will be with us in person for the first time since she started working with us as our intentional interim minister in March of last year. Shannon will be flying to Ontario on Tuesday evening of this week and we will be and will be ready to start working with us on Wednesday, June the 15th. You have heard about and read about the meet and greet time on Saturday, June 18th, next Saturday, to come and spend time with Reverend Shannon and other members of the transition team. Note, as Michelle mentioned, that you'll need to consult the music festival website 
for instructions on where to park as the street will be blocked off to car traffic. That web link was sent in the Friday email to the congregation. This will be on Saturday, June the 18th from 2 to 4 p.m. Along with having a chance to visit, there will be an opportunity to contribute to a congregational prayer. The transition team has planned to have two books available. The first, Prayers for Markham, a book in which anyone who stops in can share prayers for individuals or for our community. The second, Prayers for St. Andrew's United Church Markham, a book in which congregants and members can share prayers for our congregation as we work through our interim time and prepare to call a new minister and live into the future of our church. These ideas will be used to generate a congregational prayer. So maybe this week you could be thinking about what your prayer will be. Next Sunday, June 19th, both Reverend Shannon and Reverend Wayne Beamer will be leading worship in person in Markham. Reverend Wayne Beamer is the consultant who is working with St. Andrews to help us transition to a new model of governance for our church. Reverend Wayne and Reverend Shannon will be co-leading and co-preaching here next Sunday. On the following Sunday, June 26, Reverend Shannon and the transition team will be leading a hybrid worship and congregational event both on Zoom and in person. We hope many folks will be able to join us in person and online for both of these June services. Michelle also mentioned a new search committee is starting its work. Actually, maybe it was Shannon. In the order of service announcements and at the start of the service, you heard that a new search committee will be starting the work to call a permanent minister. We hope in the early months of 2023. Please take time to prayerfully consider nominating a member of Saucy who has the gifts you know would be helpful on a search committee and who you would like to represent you. Please contact Michelle Irwin at her email, michelle.i at rogers.com before June the 30th. An exciting few weeks. Thank you, Gwyneth. Now I'd like to introduce one of our favorite musical groups, the Choral Bells, who are going to sing Are You a Shepherd, composed by William P. Rowan, words by Ruth Duck, and accompanied by Michael. Good morning. This will be the last appearance of the choral bells until the fall, and so we want to wish you all a happy and safe summer. We'd like to thank Michael for all he has done to bring us to this point. Thank
thank you. That was lovely. From the flowers in the sanctuary to the volunteers who help in many, many ways and your generous donations, we are grateful to all of you for your time, talents, and treasures. And I think Shannon's going to introduce our new uh, hymn of dedication. Yes, we are uh, learning a new hymn of dedication from the More Voices. It is found at 182 in More Voices. It's called Grateful. And this has, um, this has like, it's one of those songs that has a longer, ver a longer chorus and then a couple of short verses. We're just going to be singing the, uh, the chorus over the next few weeks to get to know it well. So I will pass it over to Michael and Jeannie to help us learn this new hymn of dedication. This is a prayer for Pride Month, uh, written by Jordan Sullivan, a trans man and a therapy conversion survivor. O oh, love that will not let us go, our hearts are filled and overflowing with joy, deep love, and gratitude. We are thankful for the gifts of all affirming ministries and communities of faith like our own here at St. Andrews, who open their churches, their homes, and their hearts to Two-Spirit and LGBTQ plus people and all their intersecting identities for music, friendship, and for family. We are thankful for the love that will not let us go. We are thankful for Pride Marches and Pride Month, for all those who publicly, intentionally, and explicitly affirm that 2S LGBTQ plus people are children of God. We are thankful most of all for the blessing of a love that is and always has been there for us. The truth at the heart of our faith that you are love echoes in today's words and in music, in friendships and in family, in our hearts and minds, and continues to challenge us to love. We pray for our hearts and minds to be open to our own homophobia, transphobia, biphobia, to be open to our own racism, sexism, ableism, sizeism, and all the ways we fear those who are different from us. We pray to learn how to recognize the kinship between our souls and the souls of those who to us are strangers. We pray that we will never cease in our journey to learn how to love more radically. We pray in the name of love that flips tables and cracks whips, the love that heals those judged by religious leaders and powers, the love who lives and loves among the marginalized and the outcast. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Mother, our Father, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now join us in singing hymn number 150, uh, one of the new hymns that we've learned, Spirit God Be Our Breath, as Michael leads us. Friends, go from this place and remember, does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way at the crossroads, she takes a stand. Beside the gates in front of the town to the entrance of the portals, she cries out, to you, O oh my people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. Friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>